Are you ready to change your life, but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising flood waters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at Aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I have dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can just email me at uh, oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, check out our member section or our Patreon, Opperman Report Patreon. We're going to have all our shows up there soon. And uh, our archives are always free. You go to Spreaker.com. You find the archives up there. You sign up for free. as a chat room. You get an email notification every time we put up new content. I am so excited about today's show, okay? He's one of these old Brooklyn guys that I love. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, I notice <laughs> a lot of people. I used to have a, a New York accent. Okay, most people don't hear it anymore. The book is called. You sound like a Brooklyn. You sound like a Brooklyn dude. Staten Island, Bronx first, and Staten Island. We're mortal enemies. Right. Wait, I'm from the Bronx. We are we are born enemies, my friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, do you, I know. Do you remember the Ford and Baldies in in the Bronx? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. The Ford and Baldies. Let's do the introduction first. The book we're talking about is called From From the Mob to the Movies, How I Escaped Mafia and Landed in Hollywood. The book's barely, the ink's not even dry yet. I'm the first guy to get this guy on the show. Uh, and on the book, it's uh, in the, it's called Richie Salerno, but his real name is Richie Frangi? Correct. Frangi. Mr. Frangi, tell us about yourself. Who is Richie Frangi? Richie Frangi is a kid from Brooklyn that got mixed up with the mob because that's what it was in the 50s. That's all there was in my neighborhood. And uh, I had my good Jewish chutzpah to keep me alive, and um, I wound up in jail alive. And I got through jail, 10 years of jail, with my chutzpah, and I managed that, and I stayed alive. The key was I stayed alive through all of that. That was the key. How old are you now? Yes. How old are I'm you 83 now? years old. 83, 83 years old. 83. And still kicking and snorting and doing everything else. There you go, man. And where are you living? New York, California? No, I'm living in New York. I just I was in California for 42 years, and I re- relocated to Manhattan. I'm on uh, Fifth, uh, 3rd Avenue and 25th Street. Now, I got to imagine, right, the Richie and Fringe today, but when you walk around the city, people recognize you all the time, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And they recognize your voice too. The they recognize your voice too, I bet, right? Yes, the voice is the key. Yeah, when I start talking in a bar or somewhere, <laughs> they'll go, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you go to his IMDb page, you'll see a picture of him when he was in MASH, and you'll know exactly who this guy is in, in 10 seconds. <laughs> so now, Richie, what kind of crime were you doing with, with organized crime there in Brooklyn? I was uh, doing a lot of um, a lot of heists, short heists, home invasions, uh, hijacking, uh, you name it, I did it. They're pretty serious stuff. And so and now I know you did ten years. Uh, did you have a lot of yeah. minor arrests before the big case? Yeah, yeah, yes, I did. You know, I did. I, you know, yeah, you know, stuff here and stuff there. But you know, you got the mob behind you, and you get out. You go in and you get out. You keep your mouth shut, and you get out. And then you go back out, and then uh, you get a few more notches. Oh, Richie, that was great, wonderful. Thank you so much. You know what I'm saying to you? So then you get the tips and you do it. You find uh, the, the, the bad doctors, the dirty doctors that were, you know, cutting up women. Hmm. So those guys were prime targets to rob, to steal. Gotcha. And who, and, and who gave you the information? The women. The women gave you the tips, and that was that's how that went. So these are like doctors and doing had, illegal abortions? Yes, that's what they did. Okay. Back then, you know, and they cut them up, and not like, you know, they cut them up pretty bad. Hmm. But they hurt a lot of women, so that's, this girl came to me and said, you know, this guy cut my sister up, I said, well, let's go get him. Hmm. And we did. We got him, and we, I took care of him. Can you, can you describe which family you were affiliated with there in Brooklyn? You know, I don't think that I should go there with that. You don't have to. Yeah, that's fine. Now, you know, I don't have to. It doesn't matter. There was many, uh, there was many people that I did business with, uh, different families. I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, affiliated with one family. I didn't do that. I moved around. Uh, not, you know, I, nobody put their hand on me. I didn't belong to anybody. You were never actually made then, right? No. Okay. No way. Okay. First, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm only half Italian. I'm Armenian and I'm an Italian. My father was an Armenian, my mother was Italian. 
you can't get made even if you want it. Gotcha. It don't happen. And I didn't want to go there anyway because the made guys, they don't, you know, these guys' IQs are 50, 60, 75 maybe. Mine's was 110. Hmm. Running around those guys. So I didn't know that at the time. I only found that out when I went into jail. Because when I went into jail, the, the, the psychiatrist said to me, Ferranji, you're going to have a hard time in here. I said, why? He said, you got 110 IQ. These guys in there are pushing 75, so you can't make fun of them. Mm. And I said, I, I don't intend to. And, but that was the greatest tip that saved my life in the joint. I what? never looked anybody straight in the eye, and I just did what I had to do. What about when you're sitting in that courtroom and the judge says you got 10 years? Was it 10 years or was it more? No, it was 10. When he when he um, hit me with 10 years and he said, uh, do you have anything else to say? And I said to him, well, Your Honor, you raised me that something to say. What I got to say is this. There was a guy in front of me, the fire chief in your in your in your community, just got five years probation mm-hmm. for playing with two young girls. And you, all as I did, was rob the guy, and you gave me ten years for robbing him. And how come he only gets five years probation and I get ten years? He goes, "Well, that's my business." I said, "I heard that guy is your brother-in-law." <laughs> True story. Okay. No <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you said that after you got sentenced, right? Not before. You would have got 20 yeah, years. <laughs> yeah, 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 look, he has something to say. I, he said, get this guy out of my courtroom. Get yeah. him out. That's all in the book. That's all in the book. That's now, all in this, this wonderful novel I wrote. Yeah, and, and the book, it's once been, again, yes. the book, once again, is called From the Mob to the Movies, How I Escaped the Mafia and Landed in Hollywood, okay? Now, now, Richie, yes. what's your first night like when you go there into the prison, you put your head down in your bunk, you just give up or what? When you're in, when you're in jail, when you're in keep lock? No, the first time when you're the actually first, at the prison, you know? The first night in prison? The yeah. first night? Yeah. <laughs> they put you in a little cell, dark cell, all by yourself, and you stay in there for two weeks. Okay. So when I went in and sat down, I just sat there, and I didn't know what to think, what to say, where I was going, or how I was going to get there, what was my next move, what do I eat, what do I drink, where am I going, what is this all about, all those questions went through my head. And I realized at that moment, when that guy, when the keeper, when the guard, the hack, whatever you want to call him, when he slammed that door shut, I jumped. Hmm. My insides jumped, and my brain said, okay, Faranji, this is where you are. This is where you wanted to be. Well, this is where you are. So from that moment on, I knew Richard Faranji was never going back to jail again. That's what the first night was for me. How old were you when, when you got sentenced to 10 years? How old were you? 24. 24. Okay. And, 24. And like when you were in there, did you run into any guys you know? Yes. Many, 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 uh, uh, yes. I was in four different prisons, and I knew people from all over because they're all kinds of Brooklyn guys and right. people that I knew. And there was a lot of people, yes. But what I did was with my chutzpah, kept me alive in prison. I always had a good job because I was a butcher. And I always had a, a good job cutting up meat for the warden, cutting up meat for the for the for the for the for the, for the hats, to feed them their, their food, their lunches, their breakfast. That's what I did. So I always had a good job and I, I, I kept away from the the bad guys. Mm. Who are the bad guys in prison? All of them are bad guys. <laughs> they all got a story. Yeah. And you got to just, I was able to stay away from the big yard. I didn't have to be around them because I was always, I was working on the farm. I worked on the chicken farm. I became a chicken farmer. I can, I can 
tell a, 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 I could tell a difference between a male chicken, between a rooster, and a hen. All you do is you invert the anus, and that's where you see the. Uh, oh, wait a minute. He's an ovary. That's a woman. This guy's <laughs> got nothing. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I learned. And Columbia University teaches all of that. Hey, just think, just so, like Paul, just like Paul Castellano, you went into the chicken business, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Paulie. Yeah, Paulie was a good friend of mine. He was in the meat business. Yeah. Paulie was in the meat business. He's the guy, actually, Paulie Castellano really did a lot for the meat business. Because, you know, when you're in the meat, those guys couldn't go to the bank, and you can't go to the bank and get, and get a mortgage on meat. On meat. Meat's perishable. You can't, you can't get no insurance on meat. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, when you when these guys go down there, to, you got to you got to bring them cash or a bank check. Those farmers, those cowboys, and they do not release the cattle until until one cowboy goes to the goes to the bank and then calls the other cowboy and says, "Okay, release it." That's what happens. You you, you can't go to the bank and say, "Let me a hundred thousand." Let me ask you a question, Richie. Now, when when you go there into the prison, what about your family? Did they you stay in touch with your family? Did you have a wife or anything? No, well, well, you no. Know, I lost, I lost my wife, with my four children. Oh. I lost that. I lost, uh, I lost my, my father. No, he, he just didn't have nothing to do with me, and he was as crooked as a snake. And still, he didn't want nothing to do with me. He, he was embarrassed because I got caught. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's one of those things. All that my mother and I were always okay. But I lost, you know, my brothers. It was like I committed a mortal sin that I went to jail. So I was always on my own. Again, I was always on my own. From 17 to when I knocked up my first wife. And from then on, I was always on my own. From one mistake to the next mistake to the next mistake until finally one day I said, yo, when I heard that door slam in my back of my head, that's it. That's it for me, boys. I'm done. And now, Richie, what, what kind of advice would you give to these kids? They watch these movies, The Godfather and Goodfellas and stuff like that, and then they think it's glamorous, and they say, ooh, that's, that's what I want to do with my life. What do you tell them? Well, it's like this. Guys, this is the way it works. If you do that, remember this. If you do that, you're either going to get shot in the head mm. by a mobster, or you're going to get shot by a cop, or you're going to get beat up and maimed by your cohort. Remember that. There's no there's no fun in games when it comes to cutting up the money. Mm. That's... When it comes to cutting up the money time, that's when that's when stuff happens. That's the way it works. There really is no honor among thieves. You know, that is, is the truth. No, yeah. there is no. That's, <laughs> no, that's the that's the movies. Yeah, that's for the movies. That's for the movie. That's why the mob always controlled everything. Because if you if you did if you did business with a mobster, you had a ninety nine percent chance you weren't going to get shot in the back of the head. Because think about it, if you're doing a business with a guy like him, with the mobster, and he don't like you, he's just gonna just gonna just gonna yeah. put a bullet in you. Period. Under the story. That's the way it works. Now, now, Richie, did you have a plan for what you were going to do when you got out after ten years? My plan, my plan was to go to work. I was a butcher before I went in, so I had a job. I went to the 14th Street Meat Market and got a job. And I worked for about three or four years, and I found a woman. I got married, and uh, I had a good life for a while. And then I went to Hollywood. Yeah, now was I, that ever something? Is that something you had a dream of doing in your life, becoming an actor? No, no, no. never. You know, what turned me on was I was watching uh, Telly Savalas on um, on Co- his show, Kojak. The, uh, Kojak. Kojak, and I said I can do that. I know I can do that. So I went to an HB studio. And I asked the guy, 
who was in charge of the teacher. I said, this is it. He goes, yeah, sit down, pay your money. And I sat there for six months and watched. Didn't say a word, just watched everything. And then I realized that this is what I always did mm. to stay alive. I was always on the scam, always wondering if the guy's going to whack me, if not, so on and so forth. You know, a guy fell in love with my wife. And he was going to whack me just to get to my wife. And I said to my friend who told me, I said, he doesn't have to whack me to, to, to go with my wife. Just let him do what he's got to do, and I'll, I'll take a walk. Why do I have to get whacked? That's the mentality. You follow? That's a follow. <laughs> yes, that's it. Don't let anybody tell you different. That's the way, that's the way they think. Now, you, you got a, a part. Or, and the first movie was Serpico, right? Yes. A great movie. Oh, wonderful. And the wonderful actor, uh, uh, Al Pacino, was so giving and so he was, he's a great, great human being. And and Sid Lamet, between these two guys, they kicked off my career. And uh, I just did the best I could. Hey, you played a cop? I played a cop? No, no, not in Circle Car. No, in Circle Car, I was a bad guy. Okay. I was a mobster. Rudy Cassaro. I was I was a mobster. And and what part of the movie was that? Serpico. Yeah, I know. What, what was your part though? What, what, describe it because I know the movie very well. Okay, I was Rudy Cassaro. I was the guy. I was the guy that that goes up and says they got me there for murder. You know, and everybody's laughing at Pacino. Right. And uh, that that's the scene. Those 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 were the scenes that I was in. And, and that character. And he says, yeah, he did time for killing a cop, right? No, I wasn't a cop. I was the bad guy. No, no, no. But, but Serpico says that, that everybody's laughing, but you did time for killing a cop. Yes. Yes. yes okay. Yes. Yeah, I just finished whacking a cop. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. But I had all the cops on the payroll. Right. Right. I remember that. Now, your next movie so, was The Gambler, right? Yes. The next movie was The Gambler with James Caan. Another great, great, great with with James Conn. It was terrific. He was terrific, and I'm I was very fortunate that uh, I got a, a lot of chutzpah, and every actor that I that that I met, I always bonded with him. We always had a good time, so that makes it easier. So that's how I learned. I learned from Patino, and then I went to James Conn. And I said, oh, all right, these were regular guys. Yeah. So this is how it really set in for me to understand what this acting business is all about. I know there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stories and a lot of games about this and that. I did a movie, a Morning After, with Jane Fonda and Jeff Bridges. Now, you, you, you go with Jane Fonda, and you gotta, you got to be on your toes. I played I played Harry Harry Weinbaum, a Jewish cop, and and she was unbelievably wonderful woman. Hey, let, let me ask you though we about sat, back to the Gambler for a minute, okay? Now that's your second film. Now by then, did you have like an agent and a manager, or were you just going around on auditions? No, 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 no. After that was over, I got that by a fluke. But then when this, when it was over, I called up Lamette and I said to Sydney, I said, Sydney. What do I do? I got to keep calling you for a job because no, you got to go get yourself an agent. I said, where do I do that? What do I do, Sidney? You know what he said to me? He said, pack up your bags and go to Hollywood and learn your craft. Get in there with those good actors and learn your craft because you are raw talent that has to be molded. Go to go to California and do that. So guess what I did? I quit my job. And I went to California. Yeah, you talk about chutzpah, man. It takes a lot of balls. Now, what about but The Gambler, yes. right? That was your, your second movie, but that was uh, Paul Sorvino's first movie, right? Uh, th did I know him? Yeah, Paul Sorvino. That was his first movie, right? No, I didn't. No, that was James Caan. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know, Paul Sorvino was in that movie, too. He played the, 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 the collector. Yeah, but I didn't, have any scenes, I didn't have any scenes with him. Ah, because I wanted to ask you about him, because there's a lot of stories about him, you know, about him. He, kind of he has the kind of same story as you have. <laughs> you know that? What do you want to know about him? <laughs> I've just heard a lot of Sid, stuff. 
What do you want to know about him? I just heard a lot of stuff. Some of you don't want to say on the radio. What about I, know, I heard a lot of stuff, so guess what? Some yeah. of it's bullshit and some of it's oh, real. Oh, watch it, watch it. You can't curse. Remember. Okay, what about Beretta, man? Beretta is another one of my favorite movie, uh, TV shows. Okay, Beretta? Yeah, okay. When I got on that job, I did Beretta. And me and the midget, we, we got into it. And I was in Hollywood, Universal, and he was doing really good with that show. He was doing everything. And so I was playing a bad guy, a really big bad guy, a bad, bad guy. So he moves over to the car, sticks his head in the car and says, all right, get out of the car. He's this little shrimp. Get out of the car. So I turned around and said to him, you make me get out of the car. That was not in the script. I was just supposed to get out of the car because right. be a nice boy. But I'm a bad guy. I said, you pull me out of here. I'm getting out of here. Let me see what you got. He stopped the show. Stop. Stop shooting. Everybody was laughing when that happened. Stop. And he fired me on the spot. Oh, get out of here. Yes. And the producer hired me because he knew of me and he wanted me for that part because he knew I would have did that to Beretta. The midget. Robert, I said to him. Robert Blake, you didn't like him, huh? Robert Blake. And here's me, but I called him the midget. I, I didn't give him any, I didn't give him anything, nothing. I just didn't call him Mr. Blake or Blake or this. I just said to him, let me tell you something. You just fired me and I got fired, but you know, I don't care. But, Remember this, when I see you in Hollywood, in a bar, or in a restaurant, you must, you must definitely close your eyes and drop your head. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to kick the shit out of you every time I see you. You're doing it again, man. You can't curse, bro. <laughs> can't curse. That's what I told him. You barely made it two minutes that time. Okay. That's right. what I told him. Exactly that. Okay, no, I get that. In Hollywood, you know, in Hollywood, you can't do that. You can't, you know, you can't, you isolate yourself. You get, you know, but everybody knew he was a jerk off, so, but he was, but, but, he was making money for Universal. That's, what, what that, the, you know, politics. Does he have the kind of power to black boy and not, not let you get any more parts? No, 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 no. He never did anything. He never... Mm. He never, uh, when I saw him in Hollywood or something, anytime I saw him, he just w walked the other way. I walked into a party and he was there. He just kind of like disappeared. He didn't want no action with me. Now, now, what about when you heard about him shooting his wife? Were you shocked by that or did you believe it or what? I refuse to answer that question. Okay. Okay. All right. Who knows? Yeah. My, my, what I think doesn't count. What he did, he did. You know, it's kind of funny, you know, he, he hired a friend of mine, uh, Frank Malucci, uh, to threaten his wife <laughs> on the phone. He'll call him to a threat to his wife there. Uh, kind of a bizarre little connection there. Uh, now, then you were in a Serpico TV series. No, I didn't get into that. No? No, I didn't, no, I didn't get in that. Right, has your I didn't want to do that. Oh, you don't want to do it. Hey, what about that episode of Mash? Were you only on one episode of Mash? Say what? Mash. You were only on one episode of Mash? Yes, I was on one episode of Mash because I went on a run of, of movies. I got, I couldn't I couldn't get back there. Hmm. You know, you got to have... Remember this, Ed. You got to have a good agent in Hollywood. I never had a good agent. I never had a top flight agent. I just couldn't get one. I just could not get one. All the movies and stuff that I got, I did. I did a hundred. I did a hundred TV shows, movies. The TV shows, anybody can get you. That's no big deal. Hmm. The movies I got from word of mouth. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters two. I got it because the director liked me. That's why I got that job. I mean. Uh, all my good, uh, uh, all the big ones. 
Yeah, let's take a little commercial. You know, I, I can understand that. I, I can understand how a director would see you in one of these small parts, these character actor parts, where you're, you're so much yeah, larger than life with that big giant mustache, you know, <laughs> especially, and say, we want that guy for this part, the cab driver, the bartender, whatever it is. So all your time in Hollywood, did you ever need side jobs or, or you were just an always a working actor? No, I just, no, I was a working actor. Plus, I'm an excellent horse player. A horse player? I'm a horse player, yes. You Excellent horse player, yes. At the track? At the track. You made a living at the track, okay. All right, let me... Every day, every, day, every day at the track. One of those guys, okay, great. So then you get all those... I only bet, I only bet the show. So you're one of those guys at the track, right, that gets all those tips yeah. that everybody knows who to bet on, right? Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. In those years... Everybody and all I got news for you. A lot of producers go to the track. Ah. A lot of actors go to the track. So I met with my personality. I, I had these. I had these. These trainers and owners eating out of my hand. They thought I was mm. the greatest thing since since white bread. So, and I had a good time because of my hutzpah. I didn't. I didn't abuse them. I you know I always treated them well. And they treated me well. Rich, I like my horse today. Okay, and I go bet him to show. I put a thousand to show. I pick up three hundred. Mm. What do I care? That's three hundred for the day. The next day I come back and I pay. I, I put a thousand, fifteen hundred to show. I pick up a two fifty or three hundred. That's a six. That's that's five hundred and fifty dollars. So I, I would do. I would. I would. Uh, uh, the way I did my business, I did about uh, eight nine hundred a, a week. Right, that, that, yes, that, that is good show. money. All right, let's take a little commercial break, okay? We are talking today yeah. to Richie Ferengi. All right, F O R O N J Y. Check him out on IMDb. You'll recognize this guy in two seconds. The book we're talking about is From the Mob to the Movies. I'm the first guy to get this guy. From the Mob to the Movies How I Escaped the Mafia and Landed in Hollywood. If it's the book is half as good as your personality, Richie. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a, a page turner, okay? We'll be right back with more Richie Fr Frenji after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. Thank you so much for listening to the Opperman Report. I want to welcome all our new listeners at WWPR at 1490 AM in the Tampa Bay area. We're brand new down here. We're getting a nice warm welcome. We have great advertising opportunities for local sponsors, local businesses, but also international websites and international companies too. We're on our other stations in California, Nevada, Utah, and on the internet worldwide. But down here in Tampa Bay, Florida, we have some great opportunities for you to come in and get very, very affordable advertising rates. Get a hold of me at Opperman Report at G email.com and we'll cut you a good deal pure soap flakes.com 218-568-2525 have you ever heard of castile soap pure soap flake company handcrafts fine soap bars laundry powder and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern minnesota facility bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance gmos palm oil sodium laurel sulfate and synthetic additives keep it clean folks Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call, 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flight Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. 
The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising flood waters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at Aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. And you call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Having a really fun show today. We got uh, uh, Richie Ferengi uh, from The Mob to the Movies, How I Escaped the Mafia and Landed in Hollywood. Now, Richie, how come it says that the author of the book is Richie Salerno? Well, Salerno was my grandmother's name. Okay. So, I'm writing a book about the mob, which is always a, 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 nice, a nice little catch. So, Richie Ferengi... And the mob and the Italian didn't kind of fit. Oh, so I, I got took you. my grandmother's name. I took my grandmother's name. Salerno goes with the mob, not Ferran G. Don't go with the mob. Gotcha. So that's why I used my grandmother's for a pen name, and I'm the author, Richard Ferran G. Yeah, and people really do got to go check out the IMDb page to see a picture of this guy. You'll recognize him in two seconds. He's in everything. He's in <laughs> that big giant mustache. Now, what part did you play in The Jerk with Steve Martin? That was my first movie in Hollywood. My first movie was, was I played a mobster. You know, we went to jack him up. And, you know, he does his, does his wonderful thing. You know what he does, you know. Okay, boys, listen, uh, I got it over here, but it's over there, and I don't know exactly where it is, but it's about, it's somewhere around here. So that's what you get with Steve Martin. You know what I mean? He was wonderful. And, yeah. and you know, he just, yeah, he just, he just blabbergasted us and, and, and made us look like fools. That's, that that was my first movie. My first comedy, too, I guess, too, right? Nah, Mash. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. See, I, I love I love comedies, but what I look like, yeah. you don't get comedy. You get, I was always the bad guy, or yeah. a cop, or a bad, or, or this, or that, you know what I mean? Comedies, I would have loved to do, but I tried, but I tried, and but I just never got, I never got caught the right TV show. To show off my my comedic side, but that's Hollywood. You take what they give you. Now, Richie, man, a, a work of art, a work of a masterpiece. Okay, uh, out of several masterpieces you've been in, but Prince of the City, man, that movie was for oh. the, for that period of time in New York, man, that was so realistic. Well, you got once again, you got Sidney Lumet. There was 107 speaking parts in that movie, and at that time, Lumet said, "Look." The best movie ever made, as far as I'm concerned, was The Godfather. So, being that I said that, I don't want anybody to do what they did in The Godfather, but I want you to be on time, do your job, and say your lines, and know your lines. That was Sidney Lumet. I mean, that instilled into me, I loved that man. That man made me a better person. A better person. I think one of the best scenes I've ever seen on the screen uh, was in Prince of the City, where you guys are in the backyard there, right? We treat, uh, what was uh, it, right? The backyard, uh, he starts getting drunk, uh, and everybody starts leaning in, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, that was, we started crying. Oh, man. I get, I get chills. We were like, yeah, yes, yes, that was, we were choking, we were choking, me and my just deceased friend Carmine Caridi you know he was uh, uh, we had Treat Williams yeah. who was a young actor at the time you know we had uh, 
It was just a wonderful, wonderful bunch of guys. It was great. Now, it was great. That uh, movie, I love that movie. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. I could watch it over and over. I had it on tape. I would watch it like once a year, you know. I got to yes. go watch it now. And and your acting chops in that movie, man, is like, I, I put you up with De Niro in, in that movie, you know. Yes. Well, yeah, no, any, Pacino, De Niro, yeah. James Fonda, anybody, or Jeff Bridges, I was even with all of them. Hmm. Duval, I did a movie with Duval, I was even with them. Let me ask a question now. There's a very odd movie. It was directed by one of the monkeys. Uh, I, I think of Michael Nesmith, right? Repo Man. What was going yes. on? It, what was going on behind the scenes in that thing? You have no idea. Well, when I'm first of all, Michael Nesmith is a great guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he made this movie for eight hundred thousand dollars. He made that movie. Eight hundred. We got like, I don't know. I don't know, a hundred dollars, fifty dollars a day. Some, but anyway, I played a cop, a whacked out cop. So behind the scenes, we got, we got Harry, what's his name, Harry um, Dean Stanton, uh, Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah, Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah, Harry Dean Stanton. And we got the brother. What's the brother's name? Emilio Estevez. Emilio Estevez. Emilio. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we got us three guys. All we did in that movie was laugh. And the director that we had, Alex Cox, that was his first movie in the, in the United States. Alex Cox, he was the director. He was a young, he was a young, a young lad. Nice guy. And we just did what we did. And that's what it was all about. Man, that, that movie is another masterpiece in its own way. You know, it really is a work of art. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Now, another Everybody one. Yeah. Richie, another one, man, that just blows me away. I love this movie. I love the long version, by the way. Once Upon a Time in America. I think it's so oh, underrated. Oh, oh. Fart Face was my name. <laughs> I, was, I played I played. A, I played a... I played a whacked out cop. Yep, I remember. Yeah, that was my name. Now, what was the scene? Was, the scene, what, what, you, were, you were wearing a uniform, a uniform cop with a badge. Right, right, chasing around the roof and stuff, right? And then you had sex with yes. that girl in the bathroom, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, man. Yes, yes. I went after those kids with the bat, you know, I mean, it was, uh, you had to, I had to learn how to, how to, how to how to twirl the bat, the right. baton, you know? Yes, I learned how to do that, and uh, I became the cop on the beat, which was great. It was wonderful, and and the reason I got that job, a friend of mine just passed, Brian Dennehy. He was slated to do that job, but all of a sudden, you know, he got a better job, so he he jumped out of that job, and they gave me the job. <laughs> that's how you got. That's how I got the job. Did you get a chance to work with De Niro or Joe Pesci in that movie at all? And uh, yeah, well, Joe Pesci, yeah, De Niro. I did two movies with De, with De Niro. I right. did uh, a Midnight Run, and I did True Confessions. I did True Confessions with Duval. Um, I did um, with. Um, I'm trying to remember which. I'm trying to. Remember, I got, just got crossed up. Which movie was that? Uh, we were talking about Once Upon a Time in America. Did you meet Joe oh. Pesci or, 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 or De Niro in that movie? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I met them. Very. Uh, they're very close. Those two guys are very. They were very close. With me, I have respect for the actor who's on call. Mm. I have respect for that man. I don't care who he is. How you doing? If he says okay, I answer. If not, then I don't talk to him again. I mean, I know I do, I do not want to step on anybody's, any actor's shoes that's running the show. You got to have respect. You got to have respect for De Niro, whoever was, whoever was there, or James Woods. Mm. Those are guys that were way, way above me in, in the acting business. I, I, I respected what they've done. And so I just did my job. And went on to the next movie. And that's how you build a career in Hollywood. When you get for, when you hear Faranji's name, that's the man. Yeah. Do the job. He does the job. And you know, I did uh, 
I did another movie with uh, Chaz Palminteri. Okay. I did that movie up in Canada. It was uh, it was called the um, it was about Paul Castellano. Hmm. I played Tommy Bellotti, his right hand man. Uh, I'm trying to remember. The name. I just I just lost the name of the movie. Oh my goodness! Well, that's okay. And also, Carlito's Way is another masterpiece. How do you find your way into all these incredible movies? I guess because you got such a big personality. You got the chutzpah you talked about, right? Yes. Yes, that's and I can only tell you that. And anybody going to tell? It's a Jewish word hmm. that I learned from a rabbi. And the rabbi said to me, "Is Richie, when I was cutting meat, I was cutting Jewish meat, and the rabbi would come and bless it, and I would ask him questions about what that means and how it goes. I mean, I didn't know about their religion, and he would tell me. He told me, you gotta have chutzpah.' Okay." And then he brought me a, a page from a dictionary and said, this is chutzpah. And that, from that day on, I knew what he, what he meant by chutzpah. And I always use that in my life, no matter what it is. Even to this day, that's how I break things down. you got to have good chutzpah. you got to understand what you're talking about, who you're talking to, and why you're talking to him, and what you're talking to him about. You do that, then you got chutzpah. That gets you in and out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, so Richie, the movie you were thinking of is called Boss of Bosses, where you play Tommy Bellotti. Yes, Boss of Bosses. That's yeah. right, Boss of Bosses. Yes, yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, you know, I played Tommy Bellotti. I was uh, Chaz Tommy He was right hand man. He played Castellano, and uh, we went to Canada and made this movie. Now, Carlito's Way is another masterpiece with the uh, Sean Penn and again Al Pacino. Uh, oh yeah. I don't recall you being in it. What, what part was you in there? What was what? What was your part in that movie? I don't recall. In um, Carlito's Way. What? What? Are you were Pete. Oh, Carlito's Way. Yeah. I was Pete and Mendeso. Hey. Oh, wait hey. a second. Wait a second. You hey. know, but wait, wait. Brother Frank was in that movie. Frank Benucci was in that movie. Man, he played the gangster yes. in the water. Yes, Frankie. <laughs> right. Yes. But which one were you though? Which one were you though? Which one were you in that movie? I don't remember. I was, you. I was, I was the guy that walks into the bar and yells out, hey, Pacino, and hey, Pete, I, I, I played Pete Amandeso. I was the guy that's chasing, that chased Pacino all over the place, on the cars, in, inside the cars, inside the trains. I mean, I was I was at the whole end of the movie. Really? I don't, I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't, I don't I remember get, the part. I, I, I get killed in uh, Grand Central Station. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> anyway, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Hey, now, the, yeah, that's, the book, right? From the Mob to the Movies, How I Escaped Mafia and Landed in Hollywood. Any talk about making a movie out of this? Well, no, because I, I'm, I'm still writing. Now I'm starting another one. And uh, what's going to happen with this one at this point is I don't know. I want to see who bites. I want to see when it gets out there. I mean, I have my agent. I have my, I got my people behind it. We'll send it to Pacino. We'll send it to De Niro. And we'll send it to mm -hmm. all the people that are making movies. Robert Downey. All those guys that are making movies now. They're produced. They went from actors to producers. So they got to have good stuff to produce. And what's good about my book, once you read it, you'll understand it's not just a mob story. It's a story about a guy that went through this. It's not just a mob story. It's a story about a human being that went from being a bad guy to a good guy. And what happened in between. You don't stay alive in 10 years in jail without having good chutzpah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you get whacked. You get sodomized. Unless you know what the fuck you, unless you know what you're doing. I mean, that's the way it is. Yeah, but Richie, when, when you went in, you know, you were a stick-up guy. You were doing home invasions and stuff like that. You were no slouch. You, you know, I don't think you had much no. to worry about, right? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't worried about anything in jail. I yeah. just knew that. I just knew what I said before. I knew I once I hit the big yard, I knew I was not going back. Yeah. The prison. So I knew right then and there how to use my chutzpah to stay out of trouble. I didn't. I didn't side with. The mob guys that inside with 
The Irish guys, I didn't side with the Puerto Ricans. I didn't side with the black guys. I was always in the middle. I always played the middle. And I was the guy that stopped a lot of Richie. Can you go over there and talk to those guys? Mm -hmm. I see, I'll, I'll see what I can do. In other words, the mob guys I knew, they respected me and I respected them. They didn't ask me to do anything stupid because they knew I wouldn't do it. They know me. I had to stay up and I had to stick to my guns and be who I was. Otherwise, I never would have got out of there. Never. And I was in jail. I was in there with uh, Joey Gallo, Joey the Blonde, hmm. you know, all these guys. But I knew with my hoodster what to do and what not to do. And the only way you're going to get out of there is not get into big matches of, of talking about guys. Hmm. Well, this guy does that. That guy does this. That's what they do in jail. Oh, he's doing that and he's doing this. And that's how you get yourself in trouble. I didn't. I didn't get in. I didn't, I didn't get into none of that. No storytelling. No uh, behind people's backs. I didn't do that. Otherwise, I, I got to tell you, Richie. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this interview so much. I really have. And I feel oh, like yeah. I've gotten to know you. And as soon as I saw your picture, I said that this guy's in everything, man. The book is called "From right. the Mob to the Movies: How I Escaped Mafia and Landed in Hollywood." I, I really appreciate you doing my show first, man. That's a great honor to me, my friend. Uh, what do you oh, want to leave us? What do you to it? Vice versa. Hey, call me anytime. Oh, absolutely. Same here. Any, anytime. Yeah, anything you want to promote, we'll put you on the air right away. But what do you want to leave the audience with? What I want to leave the audience with is I really want you to read this book because it's a great read. And I'm not saying that because of anything. It's the truth. You're going to be looking at the truth. Some of it is a little hairy there. Here, look. It was the truth. It was what I went through. And it's, it's, it's good for you to read because it's a great read. My friends, it's a great read. That's, and I hope you I hope you go get the book and buy it and enjoy it. Yeah, the, the Thank book you is very in, much. The book's been endorsed, too, by Denny Griffin, who's been on the show many, many times uh, from Las Vegas. There, He's saying it's a great book. Rich Salerno has an amazing story to tell, and he does it from the mob to the movies, taking readers to the streets of Brooklyn to Hollywood. Uh, truly a must-read. That's from our friend Denny Griffin. So, uh, you know, it's a good book. Uh, if you're looking for it on Amazon, it's under the name Richie Salerno. But when you go on IMDb, you look up Richie Ferrangi, F-O-R-O-N-J-Y. But, Richie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, Ed, thank you so much for having me. And anytime you want to talk, just give me a buzz. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night. And now a word from our sponsors. EmailRevealer.com. People ask me all the time, hey, Ed, are you still a private investigator? I sure am. Go to emailrevealer.com. We handle adoption investigations, infidelity investigations, where you give us your spouse's email address. We trace it back to online dating websites, catch them cheating online, email tracing, locate or identify somebody from as little as an anonymous email address, summon all your money, back child support. We can find that deadbeat, locate his hidden assets, locate his hidden bank accounts, find his current place of employment, and even assist you in obtaining a judgment and recover that judgment for you. EmailRevealer.com, digital forensics, computer forensics, cell phone forensics, recover deleted text messages, create a report that you can use in court. EmailRevealer.com, 800-572-9762. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with. And not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an Aquadam can do the job. An Aquadam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An Aquadam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An Aquadam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give Aquadam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at Aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. And you call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. 
Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I have dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be. Because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. OppermanReport.com Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Are you ready to change your life? But don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. 